You need to know this. The concerns raised by yesterday's 5.9 earthquake here in the Virginia, D.C. area are still reverberating long after the quake itself and a few small aftershocks are over. Today, schools and government buildings are closed in Washington, D.C. out of fear of aftershocks and damage has been discovered at the National Cathedral and the Washington Monument. It was the largest earthquake to strike Virginia in well over 100 years and near the epicenter is the North Anna Nuclear Power Station rated the seventh most likely nuclear power plant in America to receive core damage in the event of an earthquake. But due to budget cuts, the quake sensors at the plant were removed back in the 1990s. Luckily, diesel backup generators kicked in to prevent a meltdown after the plant lost power during the earthquake, but only one, and, and only one of the four of them failed. Failed? Only one? Even luckier, the plant was built to withstand a 6.1 earthquake. Yesterday's was a 5.8, meaning we were about that close to suffering a Fukushima-like nuclear disaster near the nation's capital. So will this quake serve as a wake-up call? Here to offer his take on this is Paul Gunter, Director of Reactor Oversight, the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. Paul, welcome back to the program. Hey, thanks again for having us, Tom. Great to have you. Uh, what's the latest from the North Anna plant? Well, I think that right now the um, concern is what kind of damage happened at the plant. Uh, we're uh, going to be monitoring this. What we understand is, is that the plant is uh, undergoing some surveillance now. Uh, I, I think without a question there has been structural damage to the plant. We're uh, most concerned about a buried pipe uh, that carries radioactive water underneath the plant. Uh, there's probably uh, 8 to 10 miles of buried pipe carrying radioactive tritium and other isotopes. And that could very well um, have ruptured, broken, and is leaking into groundwater right now. Is there any evidence that it is or isn't? Is this speculation or, and concern? Um, or you know, we saw uh, when the uh, New Madrid earthquake happened back in um, 2005 that a uh, nuclear power plant in Illinois, hundreds of miles away, uh, the Dresden nuclear power station, uh, had a broken pipe as a result of that earthquake. So, you know, this, so this plant precedent. was four miles away from the epicenter. So I would say without question there's going to be structural damage to things like pipes, um, concrete retaining walls, things like that. Right. One of the things that, that I read in the paper today, and you confirm for me if this is, is true or not, that uh, more or less 100 years ago uh, we had an earthquake here in the, in the D.C. area that was, or in Virginia, that was between 7 and 8. They didn't have the Richter scale back then, but, you know, it was ringing church bells. And they, they had, you know, ways that we can infer how severe it was. It was worse than 6.1. If that's the case, why on earth would anybody design, build, and license a nuclear power plant in this area for a maximum 6.1 earthquake? Well, even uh, more of a concern is uh, back when this plant was originally being sited in the 1960s, uh, uh, Virginia Electric Power Company uh, actually falsified reports to the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and eventually got 12 counts of making false statements to the federal government where they said there wasn't even an earthquake fault in the area. So 12 counts as 12 in they were charged counts, with 12 crimes? You mean? 12 counts uh, and you know unfortunately they only got a $60,000 fine for making false statements to the federal government. But this is the kind of cost benefit analysis that uh, benefits the corporation and potentially puts the public safety at great risk. I mean right now the whole idea of um, earthquake assessment is, is pretty much guesswork. Yeah. And if you look at what the uh, NRC was saying back in 1989 and then reassessments in 2008, there was a 35% increase for this particular plant just in the risk of having a core melt from a, from a core accident. Wow. So the risks are going up. Speaking of the risks going up, my understanding, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, is that this plant draws its power from a lake that is created by a dam that's on a river. I don't know the name of the river and that that dam is one of the, uh, you know, we talk about our crumbling infrastructure, that that dam has been identified as one of the most at-risk dams in the United States. If that dam goes and that lake drains down to river level, 
Will that nuclear power plant have water to cool itself, or will we see a Fukushima type incident well, there? You know, Particularly I, given that we got a we got a tornado pasa or a hurricane rather right. that may well hit us in three or four days. And if that dam suffers structural damage from the earthquake, and then you dump another couple hundred million gallons of water from, you know, anyhow. I, yeah, we saw a report this morning in the Washington Post that the dam that uh, which is a dam on the. Uh, 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 North Anna River, which then backs up for the Lake Anna Reservoir, which provides the cooling water for these two very large reactors. Uh, that dam was inspected and it was reported to have passed. But what they don't address in this inspection is that the uh, American Association of Cin Civil Engineers had <clears throat> given this particular dam and 142 others in Virginia a D minus for being uh, for up, uh, upkeep and maintenance on this particular and very important uh, piece of infrastructure. Right. So uh, the question is, is um, you know, if in fact we get another challenge like a hurricane and a, a heavy surge of water uh, from rain, if uh, in fact this dam can uh, withhold uh, such well, a, and then such the, a challenge. And the question, if this dam goes, does that mean that the nuke goes? Well, right now the nuke is shut down. And very likely the uh, North Anna plant will not be operational uh, when Hurricane Irene comes in. But so doesn't I think it still need power to keep, to keep the, 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 the waste cool and to keep the... The, uh, the cooling water um, is uh, at a minimum with the plant shut down. It, you know, it's a big difference between having that plant operational and the plant uh, and at a shutdown uh, level. So, so this is not such a concern. So we, we, I think that we have uh, more margin of safety now with the plant shut down. Actually, all nuclear power plants are safest when they're shut down. <laughs> so that, I think that's what we're trying to get at. The great axiom. What's the latest out of Fukushima? Well, today's news is that um, the uh, authorities have uh, confirmed that hot particles of cesium-137 um, three times the uh, so-called permissible level uh, have now been found 125 miles away from the site. So this is a, uh, a, another indication of an ever-expanding, uh, ever more contaminating uh, nuclear event that will not only present a threat in terms of distance, but also time. That kind of cesium is, if I remember my periodic table right, about two and a half times heavier than iron. Uh, you know, how does, how does a metal that, you know, and we're not talking about, you know, vaporized iodine here. We're talking about a metal, uh, the, you know, particles. How do they get that far away from a reactor? Explosions. And what we have now uh, been able to confirm through the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission is that the initial explosions at Fukushima were very likely uh, ejections of core material uh, into the atmosphere and uh, a vaporization of uh, some of those, uh, some portions of those cores. And so, um, you know, we remain concerned that this is, as it has always been, a game of hide and go seek, where these particles are now seeking out uh, to bioconcentrate and uh, biomagnify in, in the biosphere. Right, yeah, a, a terrible thing. And cesium uh, imitates potassium, right? It, it gets absorbed by the bones. It, it goes to the muscle. Muscle. Right? Yes. Okay. Paul, thank okay, you so thanks much. Thanks again. No thanks news. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, there you go. Uh, of course, the best way to prepare East Coast nuclear power plants for another earthquake is to close them all down. Time to ditch nuclear power, the most dangerous and the most expensive energy source on the face of the planet, for good.